Hello there, Ray here, and 1.19 is coming soon. That means changes are coming to the game. Not all of them are so good. Today we'll be looking at 9 things you cannot do in 1.19. So make sure to do all these before updating your world. Now leave a like and subscribe so we can get on with the video. A secret smelting trick can only be done before 1.19. If you would place in 6 bamboo into a furnace to cook up some materials, you don't only cook up a single thing. But if you take those same 6 bamboo, add a string, and make 6 scaffolding, and then put those 6 scaffolding into a furnace, you would get 12 things that could be smelted. That is 12 times better. Now if you do the same thing in 1.19, you will see that scaffolding will act the same way as bamboo, only producing one smelted item. Make sure to use all your scaffolding for fuel before upgrading to 1.19. Do you remember being able to go into your Minecraft settings and then into your option text file and then changing this gamma right here instead of having a 1, turning it up to a bigger number like 16 and saving it? Then when you load up the world, even being inside of a cave, it would actually be super bright for you to be able to see everything that's going on. Much brighter than if you would come in here and change your brightness setting just to bright. Well, those days are over because in 1.19, this is no longer possible. Even if you set your settings higher than normal, the game will just automatically not respect them. Personally for me, when I record videos in survival, it's really nice they could turn the brightness up in game. That way, when you record, YouTube often makes stuff darker and it ends up looking pretty normal for you guys. Or you're just going to have to carry a lot of night vision potions with you. The days of coming down into a mineshaft and sneakily breaking down a chest minecart to get the chest as well as the minecart separately so you get a free minecart are no longer possible. That's because now 1.19 when you break down one of these it only produces a single item and that is already the minecart chest in its crafted form. Such applies to all the different types of minecarts and the new boat chest that just break down to a single item. Ever wonder what happens when you break down the command minecart or the spotter minecart? You can see that instead of actually getting the special items, we just end up getting normal minecarts. This change will only really affect early game or like speedrunners who need to get these items. Now with the recent changes to leaves being waterlogged, it's no longer possible to MLG safely onto any type of trees or leaves because you can see what you're going to end up doing is just putting the water inside of it. You could use this as a really cool trick into fooling others into hopping down thinking that they can save themselves when they really can't. Did you ever enjoy the convenience of just pressing F3 plus F to increase your render distance or shift F3 and F to lower it all without having to go inside of your menu? Well those days are over for 1.19 as this no longer works. Now they mostly did this because it wasn't being used that much and it was mostly just being accidentally pressed and trying to press the other F3 commands like F3D or F3G. Making super random occurrences with redstone used to be as easy as having a dropper and just having a power. Once in a while item would just end up in a really weird spot where most items didn't. But the super randomness of some things were removed in 1.19 like droppers and dispensers. They're still a bit random but just not as extreme. This also applies to items that get burst out of a broken container. How off-centered a firework will end up going less extreme times for how the fishing bobber bobs as well as how long you have to wait for a fish to come in and actually grab your bobber. And right here is my FK fish farm that provides treasure loot which I will be doing in a later video. There's also less randomness with blazes and them shooting out their blaze fireballs which ends up making them much better shots. The extremeness for follow ranges for zombies and zombie pigments has also been reduced. This follow range is used to determine how far out a zombie can see a player and chase after them. It means that the rarest mob that you can find in the game that I showed off in this video is not as rare because the follow range is no longer as extreme. But pigment having a less random aggro distance is good for zombified pigment golden XP farms like my bartering bonanza here because you don't have to worry so much about this guy having an extreme follow distance and being able to think it can reach the player in the center. My farm here still continues to work in 1.19. The velocity of arrows are also more consistent and since the damage produced from the arrow is based off of the speed of it, you're more likely to do the same amount of damage every time you hit them. But you'll also lose the slim chance of being able to just one hit a mob in some cases. And this change was also applied to trap horses when they change from a horse to a opened up trapped horse with horsemen. The distance in which these guys get pushed about when they explode outwards is not as random. The next one has to do with staying safe in your world. As portals in the past could be protected from mobs accidentally going through over into the overworld just by placing some blocks in front of it. But with 1.19 they made some changes so wither skeletons, skeletons, as well as endermen 
are now able to spawn directly in light levels up to 11, meaning that nether portals, which have a light level 11, is a valid location for a wither skeleton to spawn directly there and then actually be teleported over into the overworld and potentially right into your base. So if you want to prevent this from happening, make sure to place down lights near your portal and this will make the inside light brighter than what they can spawn in. Now there is still some mobs that can spawn directly into here if you guys have seen my past nether portal farms like underload and overload. There's actually a lot of benefits for mobs to spawn directly inside of this. And I will show the updated farms which you can build using this new mechanic. But today we're just looking at more of the negative things that occur when updating to 1.19. And I'll have all my new 1.19 farms machines in an upcoming video. This farm, however, does affect my blaze only nether fortress farm where blazes would spawn here on the ice and then you would place in gas that would push them over into the nearby nether portals which they would teleport away, letting room for more of them to spawn in. But due to the changes with light levels, we can have other nether fortress mobs that spawn directly inside of this portal here, such as like the skeletons or wither skeletons. But on the overworld, we already have sorters that can sort out the non-blaze mobs. Now 1.19 they're trying to address consistencies with getting XP's from things. So if you kill something by player means, that means you will get the XP's off of it. Now this also applies to blocks, so when you break blocks by player means, only then will you get the XP's off of it. We can see this in the new Skulk blocks, but this change also applies to the older blocks that used to give XP's without the player means, such as like different types of ores and also mob spawners. So in the past, using any type of breaking method on these two blocks would produce an XP source. But now if you use a natural source like TNT explosion, you can see we get no XPs from any of those items. So if you want to now get XPs off them, you're going to have to do it with player means like lighting the TNT yourself. And you can see everything here now gives XP. Now one place we would see this is like using Bez to blow up blocks in the nether dimension. And you would often blow up like quartz. You can see that we don't actually get any XP's off of these guys anymore. Even though you could argue that the bed is ignited by the player. You will also notice this in my different types of TNT queries like my perimeter maker or just ones for clearing out large areas. Since those aren't player lit TNT's, you won't get XP's off of the ores. And you would get a decent amount of XP's if you run like a larger size query or if you had like a tunnel bore. Next we'll take a look at the nerf that comes with update suppressing, which makes it more complicated. So in the config files of your server, scroll down to here, there's something called Max Chained Neighbor Updates. This is how many updates the game will do every game tick. Anything over this number, it will just stop doing them. So by default, it's set to a million, but if we go ahead and set it down to just 10, and we'll save this. And if we restart the server, now these new settings are polite. So I got a bunch of tests here for us to go ahead and demonstrate what this means. So now that the game will only do 10 updates, if we just go ahead and click right here on this portal and break a block, you can see it doesn't destroy all the blocks, but instead starts breaking them and eventually runs to the limit of 10 updates. And then it just doesn't continue to do the rest. So you can make some pretty weird portals in survival if you just change your default settings. So if I just place water here, you can see that it did do a few updates, but eventually it couldn't update that. So it left in some floating nether portals up here. This applies to anything that's instant. So here we have some banners. And if I just break one banner, all these other banners were connected to it. But you can see it only updated two of them. And all these rest are now just kind of like floating here. Now if we have like some falling blocks above a banner, notice that the falling blocks do occur afterwards. So they don't just stay floating. This also applies to vines because vines are instant. If I go ahead and break this vine here, all the ones below it won't be supported, but they end up only breaking some of them. The rest of these end up floating. You can also notice this in redstone. So here we have a rail that's budded, meaning that that end by the redstone is powered. And the rest of this is also powered, but it's not being currently powered at the time. So if any update occurs right beside this block, it will then turn off. So if I just place a block here, you can see it does turn off but it can't turn off all the blocks it should. Instead, it only can do a small amount. So if I just come along here and update these, you can see they will eventually all turn off. And then these are actually really being powered so they don't turn off. Now this same thing applies when it comes to actually powering it. Instead of powering nine rails, if I place down a power source here, the game is only gonna power a few and then it runs into that update limit and it doesn't do the rest. So now these are technically butted but they're butted off. So if I update them, they're going to turn on. Kind of strange. 
Stranger yet is when you apply this to actual redstone dust. We got some dust here on top of these TNT. And if we just press this button here, you can see it ignites those, but this dust here can't actually pop off because it ran into the update limit. So now we got some floating dust that's also turned on when there's nothing supported. It's really strange. And if we look at F3, actually has a redstone power of 14, meaning that the redstone couldn't even go the full length. It can only get this far and then it just stops. This is zero and this is very strong redstone. Because of the updates it is locational, doing this in different location can get different results. And if you notice just this redstone line over here, if I power this, the updates actually only go out this far. Plus when the button unpowers, it doesn't actually unpower this redstone. So this redstone is actually budded. Now placing a block beside it isn't technically touching the block, so it's not gonna update it. But if we come in here and place another redstone, that does update it. But the update kind of propagates, so it didn't completely unpower. And if we just continue to do this, it'll eventually completely unpower. Now, one thing that is also instant that you probably don't think about too often is how the game changes the block shapes. So right here, we got some instant downwards redstone using cobble walls. The way this works is cobble walls can change from being narrow to wide, and they also affect all the walls below them. So whichever one it is, it's narrow on the top one, it's going to be narrow down below and vice versa. But because of this update limit, notice that even though we change this top one to being a slim version, all the way down here, once it gets to this one, it actually is still a thick version. And if we go ahead and update this block here, you can see it goes back to being thin. So some pretty cool stuff that you can actually do. But this only applies to things that are instant. So something like breaking scaffolding, you can see there is actually a slow removal of it. So it's not instant, so it doesn't work with that. Also doesn't work with most other types of vines because they're not instant. Uh, sand's also not instant, so it will slowly move down. Other things like cane and cactuses. So there's only a few things you can actually work with, even something like piston where it moves a whole bunch of blocks at once. That kind of works differently. So it has no problem doing this. So if you set your update limit low enough, it is actually possible to like break blocks without even updating other nearby blocks. So you could make any type of floating item that you want in the game. But this is only possible if you modify your server settings, which could be seen as kind of cheaty. Now if you want your world to act just like 1.18, if you set this to a negative number, it would just ignore this rule. The default of 1 million means that you have to do 1 million different updates before update suppression will actually work. And this also includes light update suppression, so those won't work the same unless you change this to a negative value. Then it acts like the past, where you need around like 1200 updates depending on your server's RAM. But it's definitely fun to mess around with, and if you have any further questions about this one, let me know. Something that becomes much, much harder in 1.19 is the advancement. How did we get here? Having every effect applied at the same time. This is because in 1.19, not only do you have to get all the other crazy effects in the game, we also have to get the darkness effect, which is only possible with the shriekers. And shriekers placed down by the player won't actually give you the darkness effect or even summon wardens. Also, shriekers is produced by catalysts so and can't be used. This means you have to find a naturally generated shrieker. That one looked at with F3 on the right hand side has the true tag for Ken Summon, which means you have to come all the way down here to the lower part of the world in a deep dark biome and bring your shulker as well as everything else. But if you complete this advancement 1 to 18, once you come to 1 to 19, it will stay completed. This is because Minecraft gives XPs and some advancements and they wouldn't want you to keep getting those XPs every time you completed it. The 2x2 advancement gets harder as well because you need to breed two frogs together. And so does Adventure Time because you need to access the mangrove swamp biome. So take advantage of this before updating to 1.19. I have more 1.19 only things so make sure you guys are subscribed. In the meantime, check out this playlist about how I'm designing a farm for every single item in the game Minecraft or this one all about simple and easy machines and farms or join my chill streams where I show how I design and create all my contraptions. Thanks so much guys for leaving likes and I will see you guys in the next video about 1.19. Bye bye!